Hi everyone, my name is Eva and we're here in my solo exhibition called Llano en Llamas at Site Galleries. Um, my work is predominantly in fibers and printing, printing and weaving. So uh, today we're going to make some frame looms and then print on the warps of those frame looms. First, I brought a couple of examples, um, just of, or just like this, of um, these like tapestry weaving techniques. Um, this one has like you can see several different weft materials, so that's why there's so many colors. Um, and then this one actually has a print in it. It's like really subtle. A lot of my work ends up being really subtle, but you can see there's a hand print um, in black. Um, which sort of conflicts with the weft colors. Um, so I just, I don't know, thought that would be a good example. I also have two different frame loom options. One is harder, but it's much better. Like it lasts a long time, but you're trying to just like, because that's the other thing about these objects is that they're art objects, but they can also be protest objects. Um, so if you're just sort of like trying to get it done quickly, can always make one out of cardboard, so I guess we'll do that first because it's quick and easy. Um, I have a ruler and a pencil and a piece of cardboard. This is the Verin Aquarium that I just bought. Um, so I'm just going to mark like half an inch in and then I'm going to mark every half an inch. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm just gonna cut like little slits where I marked. And that's like pretty much it. You just take your yarn, and this is like warping cord. It's like the best for this kind of thing. Um, and you just slide it in, and go around. Sorry. So you would just wind it all the way around. And like, it's not very dense, but you could definitely weave through it. Um, I won't do the whole thing. You can, you can just keep winding it. And then here's a needle. You would put your thread or your yarn through it and then go under, over, under, over. Um, it's super like basic. Anyway, I'll put that, I'll put that here. Um, but if you want to sort of be a little more involved um, and have like a more long-term solution, I guess, you can have uh, a frame loom on a frame. This is just like um, a wooden panel that like you would paint on this side, but it's a perfect frame for the back side. You just um, put in the nails. And this one's super dense. You can see um, the nails are like every eighth of an inch, I believe. It's super annoying, um, but the image you'll get is much clearer. This was woven on this loom. You can see it's like super dense. Um, if you want it to be less dense, then you just mark it. Like this one, I marked only every half inch, but here I'll mark it like, I think we can go every quarter inch. That's pretty like standard. Um, and I have these little nails that are, I'll put them so you can see them. They're kind of like just a small size. Um, yeah, I don't know. These are really good. And then you need some pliers and a hammer. So you can imagine this is super annoying. I think this is like 300 nails or something. You can like, you can hammer them out. Again, it's easier. 
easier if it's clamped. So that um, they're kind of angled out. That way the, the yarn doesn't slip off. When it's anyway, so that's, you kind of get an idea. You would do this all the way across on both sides. Um, and then you'll end up with something like this. Um, and then you take your warping cord and you do what's called a continuous warp. So I'm going to tie this here. Just go all the way around. And you don't have to start it at the edge. Like I just started at the end, but then now I have to do all of it. We'll probably cut that out, <laughs> but I'll just do it now. Um, but you could start in the middle if you wanted something skinny. We'll just have to suffer through me doing it now because I started it at the end. But you can see too, this is much more dense. The, the warp threads are much closer together. Also, yeah, warp is uh, the long uh, vertical threads, uh, weft is the horizontal threads. I guess I didn't say that earlier. So you want to keep tension on the thread so that as you're going, they're all kind of taut. You don't want some threads to be slack or some lines to be slack and some to be tight. So like if that happens, you just pull it tight again. The other thing about making it having the nails be really close to each other is you can always decide to skip every other nail if you want your warp to be less dense, but you can't, like if, it, if you don't have the nails, you can't make it more dense. So like it's more like for a long term, if you're gonna do lots and lots of projects on your frame loop, it's better to invest in the annoying task of hammering in all those nails at the beginning, because then you won't need to make more frame rooms, unless you want to make a bigger frame room. I won't do the whole thing. I'll just do about half. So let's say I'm at the end. If I give myself some room here. And then while holding the string tight, this is kind of the tricky part. You make a knot. Ooh, let's see, it came off the nail here. But that's okay. Just put it back in. And then pull it tight so that you can see how tight the, the yarn is. Um, and then just secure that knot. Cool. Okay. So there's your warp. And this is a really dense warp, or you could have a really not dense warp. This is kind of, this is too loose. Like, I was thinking, like, it's a fast warp, but really you should do it, like, at least quarter inch, like this guy. Um, or whatever, you can do it, like, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> um, so then this, to make something like this, where you have, or whatever, not like this, but if you want to paint on your warp, like this would be when you would do it. Um, and you can really do whatever you want. Obviously, the weft is going to, depending on how hard you, like, pack down your weft as you leave, 
Uh, like here, this is like super dense. You can see, I can't see these chords at all. All I see is these guys. And here, you can see the black and the white. Um, and that's that's the warp coming through. So here, all we I have here a couple of yarns that we can try. Um, but I'll I'll first I'll just do a little hand print just because all my work is body prints. So all oh, these are like. He's getting ready because it's going to get messy all of a sudden. So, what I do in my <laughs> practice um, is I'll take some paint. Like, you can do it with your hand or, like, I'm going to do it with one of these. If you do it with a brush, like a, like a normal bristled brush, you'll see, like, the brush marks on the hand. I guess the whole thing won't fit now that I didn't do the whole work. I'll try it. Okay, so there's that. <laughs> Put it there. Um, and now I'm just going to press it against the yarn. And I, I'm going to get some on my work, I mean on my frame, but that's okay. Mm, it's not super dark. I think I'm going to do another pass with a little more paint. So I guess the, the sponge kind of sucks up some of that. Okay, so I'm going to just press it. Yeah, and then you can see the hand is like very clearly on the warp there. And then this is the other half of my practice, this cleaning off all the paint from my body. <laughs> okay, that's good enough. Um, well, this will, while this dries, I'll just do, I'll set up some, some yarn. So, well, I'm actually going to use this guy, even though I brought these other ones. You can change your warp whenever, I mean, your weft whenever you want. Um, and you can even, like here, you can see I have several um, different wefts going on at the same time. So I have this black, like, locking up with this brown, and that's what makes that, um, like, cool transition-y things. And here, too, of course, this is multiple warps. So I'm just going to get, like, an arm's length. And these needles are really good too. I don't know where you can see them, but they're like tapestry needles, but they're made of metal and they're way better than the plastic tapestry needles. Also, a trick for if you have kind of big yarn that you're trying to get through the eye of the needle, if you spin it or like twist it like in the direction that the twist of the yarn is going, then you kind of it kind of like kinks up. And that kink is a lot easier to get through the needle. This, like, okay, so I always tie it <laughs> to the needle. Not everybody agrees that you should do that. I just think for tapestry weaving specifically, it's a lot easier if you have, like, then that, that way you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> That's just, like, my opinion. Um, I don't know if this is fully dry yet. Yeah. That's good. So the next step that I always do is um, you take a ruler. This is like a tiny ruler, but it's a tiny weaving, so it works out. And you just um, weave through it. So every other one. We're only doing plain weave in this tutorial. I'm not going to. Okay, there we go. Oh, I skipped, there's one other step. If you're worried that your warp will pop out of your nails, you can take some of just the same um, and do, oh, 
I don't remember what it's called. I, anyway, I can't remember what this is called that I'm about to do, but basically you just wrap around each nail with the yarn. It can be really annoying, especially when the nails are this close to each other, but that like guarantees, I don't know if you can see that, I hope so. Um, you can see I'm going around each nail. I can even actually, I'm gonna do it on the other one, just so you can see clearly. Like there's only three nails, but like basically you would tie it. This is over the warp that's already there. You wouldn't do it under the warp, but you go over the nail and then around it. Oops. Oops. And you do that for for everyone like going across and that way this holds the warp in place and it won't pop out. So I'll just do a couple of these. And you'll see in a second why that would be helpful. Oops. It's tricky. It's going to be really annoying. So now, now that I'm done, I'm just going to tie it to one of these other nails just to secure it in place. Okay. And so, okay, so we have our ruler, like skipping forward again. And what this does is it opens up the shed that your yarn would go through. So, and I mean, for every other yarn, right? So I go like this, kind of open the shed, and this is why you want those top threads to be really secure. And you just put your needle through. And you got your first pass, or whatever, your first thread. I mean, if you want to weave the entire length, you can start it all the way down here. But for right now, I'm just going to put it here. And so then the next one is going to be the opposite of what we just did with the ruler. So I'm going to weave through with my needle like this. Go under, over, under, over, under. The opposite. So everything that was under with this last thread is now going to go over and vice versa. And like every once in a while, I'll pull this through and then keep going just because it's it's wider than my needle. see like here because because when I was making this loom I kept going past where the like pole ends it gets a little bit harder and that's also what's hard about the cardboard looms is that there's like this surface that you're bumping up against as you're weaving and that can be kind of annoying but um, so Here's our second pass, and um, a fork is, for tapestry weaving, the best feeder. So you just, and like something that's really important, just like in most fibers, um, tension is really important. Um, so 
in the same way that we were making sure that the warp was tight, this has to be tight, but if you pull too much, like if, you, if I pull too much, it starts to draw in the warp, and we don't want that. So, like if you're starting out, it's actually better to leave a little slack. So like, I can like stretch it out a little bit here and have a little bit extra thread here. And that's better than having it pulled too tight. If you go like this, that'll give it a little extra. And then we pack it with our fork. Go. That's that's woven. <laughs> so you just continue this way all the way through, and you can change yarn whenever you want. Um, and you can also, like for example, yeah. So see, that one was tricky the way back, but now on the way there, it's easy again with the ruler. And so let's say I'm just gonna go halfway, and then. I'll bring in like this guy that like I just wanted to show you. I have this like super cute tiny loom that's from Hello Loom. It's like a project, whatever. I got it in the class. Um, you can look them up on Instagram. <laughs> They're really cute. Um, but anyway, so here's this other color. I can come in. and meet the yellow halfway, oops, like this. And this yarn is thinner than this one, so they'll behave a little bit differently when they're next to each other. But then I can either go back and then there'll be a slit in the cloth, or I can interlock them like this and then continue and then the cloth will, like it'll be one cloth, but it'll have a little bump in there. Um, yeah, I don't know, I think that's like the basics of weaving. On a frame loom, how to switch color, how to have multiple colors in the same row. Um, painting on the warp, you can do anything. Like I'm, I did a print because that's what I do, is I print on the works, but, or I do body prints, I guess. Um, but you can even paint text, like you could print a stencil and then put the piece of paper behind it, just paint the, like copy the stencil out, or you can have words, or you can just have colors. Um, yeah. Um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, my name is Eva Salazar, that's E-V-A-S-A-L-A-Z-A-R.